Hi, welcome to the very first video in the introductory class for OrcaFlex training. In this course, we will cover in a series of videos what is OrcaFlex and what can we use it for, the different features and objects we can use to create our models to replicate the real world scenarios that we're trying to solve, the problems we're trying to solve and also the the overview of the layout of the actual program itself. So OrcaFlex is made by a company called Orkina and it's a UK company and this is their website right here orkina.com and so what OrcaFlex is it's a 3D nonlinear finite element software that you can use to d perform design and analysis of a wide range of systems typically in the offshore oil and gas or uh, marine industries and typical types of problems and uh, systems you can model in OrcaFlex include but uh, there are plenty more besides this that you can model but the most common are riser systems, such as SCRs, SLWRs. It's still catenary risers, still lazy wave risers, and hybrids, flexibles, umbilicals, etc. And also mooring systems, which you could model spread, turret, or uh, SBM or jetty types of mooring systems. Also installation planning, such as uh, subsea lowering or heavy lifting analysis. We can do t perform analysis in, uh, for towed systems such as seismic arrays or towed bodies for some type of acoustic problem we'll have. And you can even model marine renewable uh, problems in OrcaFlex with uh, decent results. So Navigating to the software products, we can go to OrcaFlex, and this will actually just cover pretty much what I talked about, and this will go through the overview if you feel like reading any more information about the program, but we'll pretty much cover everything you need to know to get started with the program. So let's fire up OrcaFlex and we'll get right into it. So this is what you normally get when you open up a brand new file. You have the model area which is where you'll you'll see all your objects that you drop into the model and be able to visualize what's going on. So you have your your seabed down here which is the brown line and then your still water line which is the blue line right here we have what units we're in and the a reference distance or scale and then this is our global coordinate system up here Z is always referenced from the water line and this squiggly line right here is for waves and we'll go into more detail once we talk about the environment, how this will change and we'll know what type of environment we're, we're applying. So if we go up to the ribbon here, uh, we just have these different types of menus. File is pretty straightforward and where you can open save files, print or, or set the properties in your, uh, in your model edit straightforward model this is where you can create new objects a vessel line different types of buoys 60 or 3d winches lengths etc and shapes and the next one calculation this is uh, just for statics running dynamic simulations and there's also a few other tools that OrcaFlex has made or kind of has made in OrcaFlex such as the line setup wizard, wave scatter conversion, and batch processing if you have a large amount of load cases to run. 
serve view menu. Then we have replay options here. And then this covers different types of graphing features. This will cover the results menu will go into a full list of results for any object that w was uh, in the model at the time we ran statics or dynamics. Fatigue analysis, modal analysis, and we can report our vessel response. Tools, this can cover, uh, we can lock certain objects so we can't modify them. And setting thread count when you're running batch runs, that's important, we'll go into that. Calculating the speed index of your computer, it's also important when you're running batch runs. And the workspace, you can set up everything how you want it to, to look with the results and different types of view windows and you can save that for future work if you like the way it looks. Window, you can change the way your windows look. Uh, you can observe the static progress and external function output. You can add another 3D view, and then this is all your help functions here. Or you can also just hit F1, which will bring out up your help menu. So next, reload all those menus. If you just hover over what each one of these are, we have new model, open, save, etc. This is uh, just but looking at the picture, you can guess what it is. This is another way besides going to the model menu here. You can click on these little icons. You can create a vessel, a line, a 60 buoy, a 3D buoy, a winch, a link, and a shape. And these will run your, your calculations, statics, and dynamic simulation. You'll also see that there's a shortcut in parentheses if you want to just use your keyboard. And here are your replay parameters. This one will customize it. And this is your status bar right here when you're running dynamics. This will add another view, that little eyeball, and this is your results. And then this is another way besides going to the help menu up here and pressing F1. You can also click that guy and it will give you the help menu. This is the status of our model. It is in reset state. And that will update when you're running a statics or a static or a dynamic case. And we'll see uh, this little section right here will actually give you the progress or current status of your static calculation and dynamics. So this box right here is our model browser. If it's not there, you can press F6 to make it appear or you can go up to model on the top and also click that if you don't know the shortcut. So this will, this box right here on the left hand side, the model browser will have every single object and piece of data about your model in here. So you will know what it includes, what type of lines you have, what type of buoys, vessels, links, etc. And the type of data that is associated with it, different types of line types, vessel types, and, and whatnot. And, the first one is general. If we click on it and open it, this one is just used to set your system units and it has your static parameters, your static conversion parameters. That's pretty important. We'll go into this in another tutorial. Dynamics. This is where you want to set your time step and the type of solution method you're using. The stages, this is really helpful, a good feature in Orthoflex where you can, it comes in handy when you want to apply uh, using winches certain times in your, in your analysis. You can control when they start and stop and form certain actions. And results, just a spectral density fundamental frequency, you, know, you wouldn't mess with that for just certain types of analysis that you're doing. Post calculation actions is really helpful. Well, I'll make another tutorial for this in a, a different course. This is just used for, without saving the sim file to get the data, you can actually make a, a, a Python script is usually what I would use to extract the data, but not save the, save the sim file. 
So in case you have memory issues on your server, it's really good for that. And drawing, it's just the type of the go uh, how what color and width style the global axis system looks like, like these colors up here and the thickness of those lines. So that is general environment. We have all our environment data, so we have C, which just shows you where the surface is. So you actually can modify where that the still water line is, and you have standard parameters that are associated with the the water itself, it's like temperature and kinematic viscosity, sea density, you can modify that if needed, seabed, what type it is, and the water depth. We're just going to pretty basic stuff right now. And the wave, this is where you can set the type of wave and the wave height, wave period, direction, etc. And then wave calculation, this isn't this is the type of method we use to calculate. This all these standard parameters are fine for this type of stuff we're doing in this introductory course. Waves preview, you can see the type of spectrum and that you're applying to your model. Current, this is all the current data. You can set profiles and type of current method you want to use. Ramp during buildup is really helpful during static conversions, so you can turn the current off during statics. And you can set multiple currents if you chose to. And this is our wind data. I don't typically use wind unless I have. A, I'm using a six to a six degree calculation or three degree of freedom calculation on the vessel. We have to have uh, QTFs for that, so the vessel can drift off center. But that's just an example of what I would use wind for. But it's here if you want if you need it. And drawing this covers just the different types of colors and widths for how your model will look. So solid friction coefficients. This is a, you can set friction coefficients for different line types, 60 buoys and 3D buoys, between that particular object and other objects in the model. Variable data. This is pretty cool. You can you can calculate a lot of things, like for instance, current direction and current speed can be varied based on simulation time. It's just an example. You can vary kinematic viscosity. You can vary. Uh, you can make the current, the drag coefficient, a function of the Reynolds number, and just. Going through there, there's a lot of things that you can control uh, if you chose to make more of a custom analysis, or as some, it's really handy if you can if you want to use stuff like this that where you can replicate as close as possible to a specific system that you're dealing with. So that's just an overview of. OrcaFlex in general, it's very basic. Uh, just just showing you where all the menus are, the the features are, and just showing you where all the data is usually located, which is in the model browser. And it's a pretty basic introduction. And I'll go into more detail in the next few videos.